always, please make sure you take the time to read the question and try it out on your own before listening on. We're going to need to draw a picture first in order to solve this question. So here we have a cube that is partially submerged in water. We have labeled one side of the cube as equaling s. The question notes that s would have a value of 20 centimeters, so we could take note of that. Now the cube is indeed floating, which means it's at equilibrium, so in order to get a better sense of what's going on here, we'll draw a free body diagram. We have two forces acting on this wooden cube. We have the downward gravitational force, which can be right now labeled as mg, and then we have the upward buoyant force, which we can simply label as b for now. Now, because the cube is floating and in equilibrium, we know that the magnitude of the buoyant force must equal the magnitude of the gravitational force. So what that means is we can set the two forces equal to each other. We'll modify the terms in this equation in the following manner. We know that mass is equivalent to the density of the object multiplied by its volume. It's going to be convenient to replace mass with density times volume because we were given the density of the wood and also we can determine the volume of the wooden cube. So let's make a substitution for m. Furthermore, for the volume of this wooden cube, we can use the expression volume is equal to the side cubed. That would be true for, for any cube, of course. That's simply the formula that you know from a geometry class. So why don't we replace V with S cubed? We're going to make some adjustments to the buoyant force as well. But before we can do that, we have to understand what a buoyant force truly is. So here's the definition or the equation of the buoyant force, and it's equal to the density of the fluid, which in this case will be water, as it usually is, multiplied by the volume of the submerged portion of the object. We're going to come to that in just a moment because that's extremely important for buoyant force, and then multiplied by g. To understand what we mean by the volume of the submerged portion of the object, why don't we add an extra label to the diagram? And here it is, we've labeled it H. This is the distance, the length, or the height of the wooden block that's sort of sticking up above the surface of the water. Now, as noted, we are interested in the volume of the submerged portion of the object. Why don't we color in the submerged portion of this object? We've colored it in green just so that it stands out. Now remember, the length this way would just be S, the side length of the cube. The length this way also would be S. But notice that the length right here is actually going to be s minus the h that we just marked on the figure. So if you were to calculate the volume of this submerged portion, you would notice that it's basically a little box-shaped volume of fluid. And the volume of this green box-shaped volume of fluid would be the side times the side times the side, or in other words, s times s times s minus h, which can be simplified to just s squared times s minus h. So this will be the expression we use for the volume of the submerged portion of the object. And that's what we're going to plug in right there when it comes to the buoyant force. So there we've done it. We have the full expression for the buoyant force. We're just going to go ahead and plug that into the original equation that we had started with. Okay, so there we've made the substitution. Let's recall what the question was even asking for. It wanted the distance from the horizontal top surface of the cube to the water level. Well, that's simply h. That's what we're looking for in this question. We need to solve this equation for h. We'll notice that g appears on both sides of the equation, so it can be canceled. We can also divide both sides of the equation by s squared. And what's nice about that is that this s squared will cancel. And then on the right side, we'll be left with just an s. We could then divide by the density of the fluid on both sides of the equation. We could then subtract s from both sides. And finally, divide both sides by negative 1. Now, the algebra here might get a little tricky. What's going to happen is basically the first term, this ratio of densities, is going to become negative, and then this minus s will become positive once we divide by the negative 1. So we have successfully solved for h, now it's just a matter of plugging in the known values. Notice that for the density of the fluid we have used 1000 since that is the known density of water. And when you solve this out you should get exactly 7 centimeters to represent the height h, which again is the amount of the wooden box that is sort of sticking up above the surface of the fluid. Now in part b of the question we are placing a mass of lead on top of the cube 
so that the top of the cube will be just level with the water surface. Why don't we draw a picture? So here we have the wooden block. This time it's completely submerged in the water and we have a little lead block sitting on top of it. Now the wooden block is still in equilibrium, which means that the upward forces will balance with the downward forces, but we will have a slightly different free body diagram. So let's look at it. We still have the upward acting buoyant force, but this time we have two downward acting gravitational forces. We have the gravitational force acting on the wooden block itself, which is mg. Notice we used a subscript of w to represent the mass of the wood, and then times g. And then we have the downward gravitational force of the lead block, and, and that is also an mg, but we've used m with the subscript of pb to represent the mass of that lead block. The wooden block is still in equilibrium, so the upward force will equal the two downward acting forces in magnitude. We recall that we replace the mass of the wooden block with its density times its volume. And then the buoyant force can also be replaced with the following expression as before. The density of the fluid, which again is water, times the volume of the object that is actually submerged times g. Notice again that the entire block is fully submerged in water. So for the volume of the submerged portion, we're going to use the entire volume of the block. So that's going to be replaced with an S cubed in this case, again, because the entire block is submerged in the water. We therefore use the entire volume of that cube. Now G appears in all three terms, so it can be essentially divided out. And then to solve for the mass of the lead block, we can actually subtract this term over to the other side of the equation. And then if you want to get real fancy, you can factor out an S cubed. We can then fill in the known values for S, which was the side length of the cube, the 20 centimeters, the density of the fluid, which again is water, and then the density of the wood. Notice that we converted S, the side length of the cube, from 20 centimeters to 0.20 meters. And the reason we did that is because we want the meters cubed to cancel with the meters cubed that is found in the densities. So now we can pick up our calculators and process the calculation. And when we do that, we should find that the mass of the lead object placed on top of the cube turns out to be 2.8 kilograms. As always, thanks very much for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to this channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. And you can also send in your own question to the email address listed.